Yes, Mary had a little lamb. His fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb she carried him to school one day, and that was against the golden rule. And my daddy would start Pentecost, he would start teaching right there, man. He would start teaching right there. But that's the truth. The world hates us. Let's look at a few things why the world hates us this morning. And I don't know how good this picks up, how clear it is, but I, I, I wish there was 10 million people looking at this right here. The world hates us. You know why they hate us? Because let me tell you right now, they expelled God out of school and kicked the, per kicked the Bible out of school. When I, was, when I went to Common High School, Miss Evelyn Snyder had a Bible class. I was, I was a member of Paulie Smalt Baptist Church. It should have come out there that made an impact on my life and to the Bible story at the church, Brother David. Miss Evelyn Snyder. Got to go way back. Uh, uh, Jay said about the youth day, I'm about to follow the same with youth you got to church there. So, me, Brother Allen, brother, I'm one month old, Brother David Roberts. That's not much, it, brother. But anyway, but here's why God hates you this morning. And as long as I live, as long as I live, same sex marriage is a sin. There's nothing, I, mean, I wish 10 million people listened to it. Same sex marriage is a sin, it's controversial God's word. Even the book of Genesis, a man, he'll, he'll leave his wife, he'll leave his parents and cleave to it. You know what that word cleave, in action, the Greek means? That word cleave, cleave means to be stuck together and you can't pull apart. That's the word cleave. The songwriter says, I will cleave to the old regular cross. I'll be glued to that cross. I'll be stuck to that cross. That's what the word cleave means. The world hates us because, look here, we stand against same-sex marriage. And as long as I'm a member of Evergreen Church, if that happens in our church, I'm, I'm out of here. And let me tell you something, that little girl back named Dorothy, she's with me too, mark my word, because I, I thank God for Dorothy's conviction. You know, every year in America, over a million abortions committed. No wonder the world hates us. Look here, you're not, you, there ain't no sanctified people getting mar married same-sex marriages and doing abortions. I know a man that I went to church with. I know a man very well. He paid his daughter to have two abortions. That man died at a young age. 50 years old it was. So be, you, be aware of your sins find you out. But anyway, I'm against, we're, we're against this thing. That's what God, the world hates us this morning. Now, there's a lot of things I can say here. I want to finish this text. I mean, I can stay right here the rest of the lesson, but even in our country today, you know what's wrong with, with, with America today as we speak in 2022? We got, we got low people in high places. Low people in high places, Brother Ron. Low people. They try to tell us, and you know, you say, well, the president makes, the president makes a rule, and then uh, the Congress and the Senate, no, no. The nine Supreme Court, uh, Supreme Court justices calls the shots for our nation. No matter how we vote, Supreme Court. A mocker to God when they said they think two men could get married. How much longer is it that a man wants to marry his dog? Freedom of, your privilege, freedom, freedom of, it is coming. All these things are coming. I want, I, we'll get off of that. Let's go a little bit farther. Uh, let's get back. Uh, go to verse 15. I still ain't got to my thing yet. All right, Jesus says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Thank God he's still praying that today for us. Verse 16. Praise the Lord. They are not of this world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus, Jesus was rejected from the time he was born to that he took his last uh, breath on the cross of Calvary. Amen. He was always rejected. They hated Jesus. And let me tell you something, other. Uh, you say, well, I, I get along with everybody, and everybody, nobody don't ever say that how I believe. Are you sure you live in sanctified? Are you sure you're letting the light shine? Can people see Jesus in you? The world, the Jesus said the world will hate you. I'm not, I'm not talking about, but I'm talking about just, the, I'm not talking about the Christian people, but uh, other outsiders. How many people will come by Highway 501 this morning, go into Myrtle Beach, and look over here, and don't even consider what we're doing? Have no, have no clue and have no interest in what we're doing. If that was the case, the church would be full this morning. It would be full this morning. Look at verse 17. This is my key verse. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Verse 18. And thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. If you've been saved this morning, you've been justified, you've been born again this morning, born from above, the scripture teaches, God has sent you out in the world. 
Everybody can't preach like Preacher David. Everybody can't sing. Everybody maybe can't try to teach. But you can do something for the Lord's morning. He sent you for a mission. Look at verse 19. And for their sakes, this is right carefully, this, every word, I, I give you the foundation, uh, the pretext leading up to key verse 17. Look at verse 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Now, it, it don't say shall here, but he puts a, a clause, like a, a, a question mark. And for their sakes, I sanctify, set myself apart for myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Everybody don't live sanctified as Christian. Can you prove that? Yes, I can prove that. I can prove that. When Paul, when Apostle Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, a good example, he established church. That church had been established according to scholars for 17 years in Corinth, Greece. 1 Corinthians, first book. Paul wrote three letters. We don't have two today, according to what uh, real smart people tell us. But anyway, Corinthian church had been established for about 17 years, and Paul said, yet you are sure carnal. I can't feed you the meat. I had to give you the milk of the word. That's, you know where most people live today in the in church world? They bathed in Christ. Let me say, let me say this right I want to walk some. I, I can't leave this microphone. I feel like walking. I just think it's my legs. I just want to, you know, I want to just praise the Lord with it. I can't, I can't walk. I got to stay on this microphone. So much for all that. But let me tell you something, other. Brother Tony, what would we think of you this morning? If people come in and they seen you sitting on the front seat, you had a baby's bottle, or, or, and Brother David, you had a little sippy cup, drinking out of that. All right. Brother Harold, you had, you had, a, you had a, a beer bone. What's wrong with that picture? Yeah, yeah. Your babies. People would look at that. Well, people look at us the same way today. If we ain't matured in the Lord, we don't try to sanctify ourselves. If he sanctifies us holy, that's free will bad as doctrine too, right? That script right there is in our is our covenant back there in the back. But we need to try to live the best we can. We need to grow up and don't be babes in Christ Amen. and be adults in Christ. All right, look at verse 20. I'm getting ready to wind the scripture. I've got a couple of points I'm going to bring out. Need to pray, I for these alone. Now, what you're saying here, he's talking to God himself. He's talking to his heavenly Father. Father, God needs, I pray for these alone. But for them, are you them this morning? See what it says about them. But for them also, which shall believe on me through thy word. How many please please on Jesus this morning? Yeah. He's praying for us this morning, Brother Danny. He's praying for us this morning. Yeah. Now, let's stop right there. Five views on sanctification. Now, I'm not going to take my view. I, I think the people know me know exactly how, how I believe the scripture. But the first, let's look at five views on sanctification. The very first view on sanctification. You know, you got to keep in mind, Jesus in the first century went, sent to heaven, sent to heaven, and the, the apostles, the first generation of Christians started dying out. All right, Roman, the church, the Roman come in and took the church over. 325, Constantine, that lived in Asia Minor, which is modern day country, uh, Turkey today, he, uh, he established Christianity as, as the world is, is a Christian world. It's a Roman Empire, especially. But as time pursued Roman Catholicism, and I know some of y'all here are from the Catholic, or y'all come from Catholic Church. I, how well I know that. I, I know some of y'all have, or you got family members have. But Roman Catholicism, in the year 1200, around 1200, they picked up a they picked up a Greek mythology point that they's help after death. That's all right. You might say, well, what's your verse viewpoint, Brother Wayne? of sanctification. The Catholics believed in a place called purgatory, which they go there and after they stay there, they're not fit to go to heaven, which none of them are. They're not fit to go to heaven, but after they stay there a amount of time, <clears throat> if the family has enough money, if you know St. Joseph, St. Bartholomew lived 500 years ago, November 2nd, especially, especially the month of November, you can go ahead and they will pray you out of this purgatory place and you will be a sanctified vessel and you will be fit to enter into eternal life. I hope nobody don't believe that this morning. Look here, Paul, preacher David, there's one place, and Jay, you help me. It might have been his Thessalonians. One place, Paul had a little bit of trouble mentioning just briefly about people trying to pray for the dead. You want to talk, Jay? It's in the Bible, New Testament. And, uh, but Paul put a stop to that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. 
It's, it's not that way. It's not that way. So the first point this morning in sanctification is the Catholic Church around 1200 A.D. They come up out of a purgatory. You know what? You might say, well, Brother Wayne, how long does someone stay in purgatory? Well, that's how many sins you have. It's mo the most wicked you were, the wrong you stay. But the more money you have, the family has, or people has, they can pay your way out of purgatory. You know what? There's probably a billion Christians in the world today. I might be more than that, I guess, whatever. And, and the Catholic folks and the Protestant folks, which is us, they are Christian, as, as way of speaking. Now, I have used to, the first time I went to the Holy Land, I went with a Catholic priest. I, I, I loved that man. I mean, he was just, a, he was on the base over at San Vito, at Brand, uh, San Vito Air Station, and Brand East, Italy. I, I went with him. I got real close to that man for about a week over there in Israel, a Catholic. Preacher David, he could tell you about the Bible. He could tell you about Bible, Old Testament, especially Bible history. Oh, he could tell you about it. But yet, he could. He meant he, he. He felt like that after I died, he could pray for me if I wasn't quite ready to meet the Lord. And I'd go to a place of preparation, which you say my well, first point is a place of preparation that they'd be ready to go to heaven. Now, there's a holy. They know holy place. When, that, when you cut that tree down, it's going to see where it said. Spiritually speaking, all right. The first point is. The Catholic folks believe in a place of preparation called purgatory. Let's look at the second opinion on, on sanctification. A lot of people don't believe it's a purgatory, a place of uh, preparing, but it, the second point is positional sanctification. What you mean by positional sanctification? You get everything at one time. You get everything. When God saves you, you're t totally justified. You're totally sanctified. You cannot lose any, no matter what you do, you're totally in God's sight, ready to go to heaven. No matter how many sins you commit, whatever, you got your ticket, and no one can get the ticket. That's called positional sanctification. Now, my point's on, I, you got an opinion on that, I have too. Now, let's get closer to the free will Baptist, which we are. I, I, if I wasn't full-blooded free will Baptist, Brother David, I wouldn't be here this morning. You might say, well, brother, you went to free will Baptist Pentecost, yes, I did. But Dorothy tell you, right, most of those people down there at that church was regular Free Will Baptist. They had come out of Oak Grove Free Will Baptist Church and started that church, Common Church, in 1938. They were most of them still regular Free Will Baptist or Free Will Baptist. All right, what is progressive sanctification? My study on progressive sanctification is, it, well, you get saved, God sets you apart, you become a new creature, but then it's up to you to progress or grow as a Christian. Now, my viewpoint on this right here, and like I say, you could be what you want to be by pulling verses. You can come to me and say, brother, I believe that. Well, you pull verses to be what you want to be. But if you'll study rightly, divide the word of truth, sanctification has a two, two sides of it, Brother David. First of all, it's God's side. We get saved, it's God's side. You might say, well, what's the other side? It's our side. Can you prove that? Yes, I can prove it many, many places. Paul told the Ephesian church to put on and take off and put off and on. Look here. What would have happened? Get a perfect example. 12 chapters of Exodus. Uh, God, God told Moses to apply the, the blood on the side post and on the lintels and sanctify himself and get ready to leave. What if they said, I, I'm not going to do that. I, Lord, go ahead. I, I, I think I'll wait the next time. Now, look here. I, I'm walking on thin ice this morning because there's a doctrine of, 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 of works this morning. It's grace and works. But I'll tell you right now, you might say, well, I got saved. God sanctified me holy. If that's the case, you'll work for him. Let me, let me make a statement right now. There's 10,000 people listening. In 2022 this morning, you say amen on this right here. If a person that claims to be saved and they believe in progressive sanctification, that's growing as a baby to adulthood. If a person this morning don't have enough salvation to bring him to church, I would not know way God's, God's going to trust his salvation to carry him to heaven. I'm tough for preaching David now. I'm not a pastor. I can lead him more. He, he's here. I'll say that again. Don't you get it very careful? That's right. Forsake not your sin says together. If a person don't have enough salvation, sanctification in his life, to bring you to church, you gonna think you think he's got enough church, got enough salvation to carry him into heaven? That's tough, ain't it? Brother Darrell, is that, that, 
the truck it, brother. That's the way I was raised, old time holiness preaching right there. That's why I was raised, brother. That's why I was raised. And they taught that. And look here. When you come church time, whatever, they put that hood, they cut that tractor off. And I remember that little boy had a mule, put the mule in the stable. I don't care if they was right in the middle of the yard in the back of, of, of picking corn, whatever. It's revival time. We sing this song, uh, Glory, 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 Somebody Touch Me. And everybody stands up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I stand up on Saturday night. You know why? Revival used to go through Saturday night. I got saved at Little Lamb Pentecost Holy Church, Sister Elizabeth, on a Saturday night. Yes, I did. But now, if you have a revival from Wednesday through Thursday, and I remember right in the summertime, in the summer, right when we farmed, everybody farmed out there, revivals would go for two and three weeks. What's happened to the church? Are we still saved? Yeah, I feel like we are. But are we really living the set aside life, sanctification? Now, insert this right here, and I, I, I'm going to try to finish two more points to start, if I can. Your sanctification might not be my sanctification. I got different conviction, Brother Harold, in front of you guys, or vice versa. There's things I will not do. Uh, I'll say what J Jay and Jennifer tell you right now. His daddy hadn't changed there a bit since I was, when he was since three or four years, five years, whatever it was back then. And he, he taught Sunday school, man. I was 16 in adult class when he was 12 years old. I'm not a, I, I'm not a double minded person. I believe like I believe. And you're entitled, look at I'm not saying that you, you could, I, I'm not saying that you can't look at sanctification a little different than I do, or whatever. But are you set apart for God? That's the question. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I've seen free will Baptist free and holy. Let me tell you, back when I was a little boy, 10 or 12 years old, there was very little difference between the free will Baptist and the Pentecostal. Their doctor, Tony, their belief that the sanctification, like I said again, was, was, that and speaking in tongues divided the denomination, but the lifestyle was the same. Yeah. My granddaddy Miller was a full blooded Baptist. My granddaddy Everett Lewis was a full blooded Pentecostal. Their lifestyle was the same for today. Amen. My grandma, a little short Baptist lady, me and preaching room went to pray for her, but she shouted all over that room, Baptist lady. And then my grandma Lewis done the same thing when my granddaddy died. Shout like preacher David this morning. Yeah. But progressive sanctification. That's up to us to get this as close. Am I close to the Lord's want to be? No. I got a lot of imperfection. You have too. Well, can we get closer? Yes. Yeah. And now, now I'm really getting on the, on the, on the, on the I got two more points. I, I'll, I'll be finished. Now, sanctification. We talked about the purgatory way, the preparedness way, positional sanctification, progressive sanctification. Did you know that people in this world Brother Larry, that believes in what they call permanent sanctification. The second work of grace, the second blessing. You might say, well, that's the Pentecost. Let me get a little history of where that come from. History. Back in the 1700s, a Methodist preacher that started a Methodist denomination, John Wesley, he went on horseback. And uh, history tells John, John Wesley averaged 40 miles a day riding this horse to camp meetings back on the brush hauler way back. And his wife, some, uh, even history said, but, he would, he would get on his horse, and his, and his horse knew how to go home. And three hours in the morning, his, his feet and his legs would be, be frozen to the saddle, and she got go out there and prize him off the saddle. But John Wesley believed, all right, Spurgeon believed this right here. Charles had the Spurgeon, a, a fine Baptist preacher back then. They, in the 1700s, all during the 1800s, the Civil War days especially, they had more revival Civil War days, uh, salvation has been in recorded history in America. I'd like to go there about another road. But uh, John Wesley come up with there's a second blessing. That if when you get saved, if you go down again, God will totally eradicate the sin nature. Nowhere in God's Bible here. If that's the case, Apostle Paul never obtained that in Romans 6, 7, and 8. Paul said he struggled with the struggled with the flesh all the day of his life. How many of us are Apostle Paul this morning? None of us. Now John Wesley believed this right here. Now let's we ever going free will better church. Let's bring it where we live at today, 2022. Benjamin Randall, about the same time, 1700, started up in New Hampshire, started the free will Baptist. Paul Palmer in the North Carolina free will Baptist. Now, their doctrine was a little bit different. I've studied this year, and I've uh, Dr. David Crow's authority in the National Association about church history, free will Baptist history. I read a lot of his stuff. He, uh, Rick, Preacher Rick Bowling's 
money's knowledge about stuff. But in the late 1800s, it got so that Free Will Baptists would go and they would believe that you got saved, we got everything. The other side of the church said, no, you, there's a, there's more, God's got more for you. There's a second work you need to have. So that infiltrated from the masters of John Wesley into the Free Will Baptists. Now, it drug on, drug on, and drug on. Now, in about 1906, 1920, let's say 1920, I, I, give or say, it got so controversial and divided with the issue of three words of grace. Now, I'm only talking about two words. Less than next time, I'll be out three words. But there are only two words. And look at I can't believe in two words if I want to pull the verses out. It's there. It's there. All the Ephesians. I'm mean, everywhere. Everywhere. But it got so in the free will Baptist. Finally, they got so well, they come out and become a different association. Now, belong to a church, deacon board, Sunday school teachers, 30 some years, 35 or whatever. Uh, free will Baptist, Pentecostal Faith Conference, church. I know their history, where they come from. They come out of original free will Baptist. Same thing, uh, free will Baptist has to be on today. But this doctrine divided the free will Baptist denomination. Uh, free will Pentecostal Conference headquarters in Turbeville today. Then there was Brother Nelson Hurl. You remember Brother Nelson over at Calvary, Pentecostal free will Baptist. A fine man, good people. I knew a lot of people over there. Their headquarters is still today is in Dunn, North Carolina. Now, did you know these days are independent? We sung it, independent Free Will Baptist. Mixed multitude of people, all kind of ways. And still today, over 100 years since these conferences, the association has split off to go to different branches. I guarantee this morning, if we took a secret ballot, how you believe sanctification this morning works, is it work of grace, work of faith, whatever, we wouldn't get all the same answer to this church. It's still dividing people. It's still dividing people. Now, let me say this right here. This right here. And I'm coming to a close. Got one more point. Then I'm going to finish. One night, Jay and I were singing at a Pentecostal church. I had my man, and Jay had to get her. I don't even think Dorothy was there. No, I did. I think me and Jay went down there just to do it. Just, well, whatever. But anyway, uh, the man, man spoke, spoke and says, You know what? You need to come over. You need to be sanctified. He says, I am so sanctified. I could not sin if I wanted to. I cannot sin. I said, Jay, how about bring my man and I'm gonna find me some, I'm gonna get in the car. Now folks, the devil used purgatory as a lie to the church. There ain't no such thing that you that you free from sin in this world. Now, what are we talking about this morning? We're talking about purgatory, Catholics, place of preparation, positional sanctification, which a lot of big, greater bigger denominations believe that. Progressive sanctification, which I believe we're supposed to be growing. Paul said he died daily. Yeah. And that means he sanctified himself daily. Some days he didn't do right. Now, here's another thing. This man said, I couldn't sin if I wanted to. I, I just rubbed against me. I had been laying brick all day. I was just tired. And, I, you know, we went and sang whatever, from revival, whatever. And I, I just got I don't want to get out of it. I didn't, I didn't believe that. I, I could go on and on about it. I could tell so many things. And, I told Jay a lot of times over the years that, that we, went, we went to church, and I've, I've been to cottage prayer meetings, and I can tell you things that you will not believe this morning. I've seen a lot of dodos in this thing, son, and Lulu's. You believe what I'm telling you? I, I, look here. I've seen some that even drinking water was a sin, but yet, and a month later, they backslid, went back and started drinking out in the world. Where is that can't sin this morning, too? Where, where is that th doctor in that? Folks, it's common sense this morning. All right. One more division. I guess sanctification, and all of us will agree with this. I know we, we got different opinions. There's a place, there's a sanctification called perfect sanctification. Anybody want to tell me where that's at? In the, in the pearly streets of heaven, golden streets. When we all get to heaven, there'll be no, there'll be no temper then. Then we'll totally be sanctified from sin. The devil won't be there. The accusers won't be there. He won't be there. We'll totally be sanctified, totally dedicated. But what do we, what do, we do? Leave me this thought right here. What do we do in the meantime? Do we throw hands and say, wow, I can't live this. It's too hard for me. No. You keep striving. 
Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high call. You know what that word press toward the mark means? That was a Roman army term. In other words, when, when the, when the, when the cap, Roman captain gave, gave, the, gave the command, he said press. Of course, it's in Latin or Roman and Italian. But press meant he took his shoulder to the wheel, the old wooden wheels, and tried to move the army out. That's what Paul meant. I pressed toward the mark. Brother David, are we pressing toward the mark? I want to be pressed toward the mark. Now, Brother Wayne, how you, how you, how you believe it? I believe in progressive sanctification. Yes, Everybody agree with that? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, whatever. But if you want to believe in works, well, it don't matter. But one thing about it, and I'll say it again. If you don't have enough salvation to bring you to church, I doubt you got enough to make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, I didn't mean to ramble. I felt like trying to preach a little bit. If I'd have had that microphone, I think I'd have danced a gig. But whatever. I enjoy it.